I'm at Super George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Are you ready for a miracle today? Are you ready to receive? Oh yeah, let's pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Say this with me. Say, Father, I demand and I receive my daily bread right now. In Jesus' name, it is coming to me now. Amen. Praise God. Angels, go. And see to it that our needs are met. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Believe and expect a miracle. And a miracle is coming your way today. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Father, we give you praise for today's broadcast. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We are yielded to you. You are the one who gives the word. And we publish it we are part of the great company lord that are publishing your word therefore your word is published in the originality with which you spoke it lord thank you because burdens are being lifted right now and yokes are being destroyed in the name of the lord jesus christ amen praise god i was sharing with you Yes, now we've, we've been talking about contending for the faith. So yesterday I shared with you in, in, from Colossians chapter 2 and verse 6, As ye therefore receive Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. He is the one that told you, now you are saved. It's not the pastor's words, it is the Holy Spirit. Now if, the, if you didn't hear the Holy Spirit, bringing that conviction in your heart, I'm sorry to tell you this, you are not saved yet. Because salvation is not the work of any pastor. Salvation is not the work of any prophet. No prophet can save you. No pastor can save you. No prayer on the altar can save you. It is the Holy Spirit seeing the sincerity of your heart. And, and listen to me, I want you to understand something. Even when we say seeing the sincerity of your heart, it's not enough. It's not enough. See, first, the Holy Spirit, and I tell, I tell people this, you didn't get born again by yourself. No. You responded to a call. So Jesus calls you first. Peter said, for the gifts, for the promises unto you in Acts chapter 2, and to your children, and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. So the Lord will call them first and they respond to the call. The Lord called you first. That's how you found your way to the altar. Not because the pastor was called. There were, there were times you heard the pastor preach all the preaching and you, you, you just said, for what? I'm not going. I'm not, I don't think I'm bad enough. I'm not going. See? But there was a day, maybe not even responding to an altar call. Maybe you were watching a TV program. Maybe you were in your room and then it just dawned on you. Come on, guy. Jesus is Lord. And you, you go, yeah, Jesus is Lord. Jesus is really Lord. You see, that, that's the miracle of salvation. How do you know Jesus is Lord? How? It's the Holy Spirit. Now, he's telling you here that the same way you receive the Lordship of Jesus is the same way you should walk in him. Now, that's the closest, I told you on, 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 on Monday, that the gospel message is simple. God loves the world. And he gave his only begotten son that anyone who believes in Jesus should not perish, but have eternal life. So, the, the thing is, when you receive Christ Jesus, perishing has been expunged from your existence, from your life. You are not supposed to perish. You are not supposed to perish. You 
are supposed to receive eternal life. Now, it is the eternal life that you receive that makes it impossible for you to perish. But you see, you have to learn now how to live in eternal life. If you receive eternal life and you don't learn how to live in eternal life, you will still perish. You will still perish. Because the Bible says the punishment of the sin and the transgression and the transgressors are the same. So the transgressor is the one who knows and decides to go other way. The sinner is the one who didn't even know. He says both of them will suffer the same punishment. So when you receive Christ, you just realize that because of Christ that you have received, now he dwelling inside of his who produces eternal life. The proof now that he is dwelling in you is this. He will give you words to live by. You see how it works? So because Christ is now in me, Everything I want to do, he instructs me on how to do it. It is the instruction I receive from him. Jesus said the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Meaning, now Jesus is no longer here. So he's not saying we go carry the Bible and only be reading what the things he said, no, everything written in red. No, remember before he left, he said, look, I'm going away, but I will send you another comforter who is just like me. He acts like me. He talks like me because everything you see in me is him. Praise God. Yeah. So now Jesus is gone to heaven, but he left us with the Holy Spirit. So the words the Holy Spirit speaks to us today, they are spirit, they are life. Now, this is how to live eternal life. To live eternal life is truly the fulfillment of what God said from the beginning. Man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. The Holy Spirit will never speak his own words. Jesus said he will never speak of himself, but he shall take of mine and he shall reveal it unto you. It's the same thing. Everything the Holy Spirit says to you is the word of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He's not going to tell you his own words. So when you receive now, he is dwelling inside you. When Jesus was here on earth, he was with them. So when they want to do anything, they go to Jesus and say, Lord, what do we do? Have Master, how do we go about this? And Jesus will tell them what to do. But now the Holy Spirit is in you and the same Holy Spirit is in me. Can, can you see that? So he's in you instructing you. David said, my reigns instruct me in the ninth season. That's, that's the Holy Spirit for you. He gives you instruction. He tells you what to do in the morning time. He tells you what to do about the situation you're in. He tells you how to go about the things you presented before him. You see, everything he tells you to do, when you believe it and carry it out, you are living. Because the words he's speaking to you, they are spirit and they are life. That's the Holy Spirit for you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Did you get that? So now he says, as you have received Christ Jesus, so walk ye in him. The same way the Holy Spirit convinced you that you are now a Christian is the same way you should listen to him for every decision you are making in life. That is how to earnestly contend for the faith that was delivered to the saints. Why? Because, you see, most times, you see, the group thing have brought about a limitation. That's why even the apostles, they were gathered. So the Bible says some teachers and apostles and prophets were gathered. And God spoke and said, separate me, Paul and Barnabas, for the call. Saul and Paul and Barnabas, for unto the work that I, will, I have called them to. So the disciples laid hands on them and they went. Now, why would the Holy Spirit do that? They said, I, I have a special work for this to, to do for me. And the Lord began to lead them in their path and in their way. He began to lead them. You see? And they began to do mighty things for the Lord. Now, that's the kind of separation that the Lord brings about. Now, this separation doesn't mean leave where you are and go and start your own ministry. It may be 
But you see, the most important thing is being separated to listen to him and be taught of him. Let him be your teacher and let him be your guide. Now, the Holy Spirit is not going to bring a new kind of faith to you. The Holy Spirit will bring exactly what was in the mind of Jesus when Jesus spoke of faith. That's how it works. The Holy Spirit brings the mind of Jesus to bear on the earth. So when you begin to cross check from the Holy Spirit, every decision you make, guess what? You are contending for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Now the broader line or the border line for this whole faith thing and belief is, is, is what John 3.16 tells us. Now I know that God loves the world. And I was part of the world. And he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, to die for the world, to tell you the extent of his love. And then he says, now whosoever believes. See, Hebrews, 6, Hebrews 11, 6 tells us, without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to God must first believe that God is and then he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Now, what's he saying? The Holy Spirit is in you. And when you believe in the love of God for you, he tells you you will not perish. Why will you not perish? Because words are being given to you from the Spirit of God that causes you to leave. He's the one that will tell you, don't take that trip on Monday, go on Tuesday, that you may leave. He's the one that will tell you, don't take that decision now. Take this other decision. Why? That you may leave. He's the one that will tell you, don't eat tomorrow. You're going to fast for the next three days. Why, Lord? Just obey me. Okay, sir. You know why? That you may leave. He's the one that will tell you, get into this business. Why? That you may leave. See? So whosoever believes in him, if you believe in him, you will consult him for everything. When you think, well, I mean, you know, sometimes you find Christians. Oh, can we, can we pray? Listen, what are we praying about? Something we already know. Don't we have common sense? Have you heard people talk like that? Something we use common sense to do. You're saying we should pray about it. Hey, be scared of such people. The people that are saying we should pray, it's not because they don't know that they have common sense. But you see, before you apply that common sense, you want to check it out with the Lord. Lord, is this applicable in this situation? That's why as a child of God, never be in a hurry to make decisions. Have enough time to go before the Lord. Now, I'm not saying take one week. I'm not. You see, you see the Lord is there. He's not far away. Don't, don't think, uh, oh, I'm going to take time to pray. It will take me like three days before I hear God. Come on now. He is there. When you were discussing, he was there in that conversation. He was there. And he already has his mind concerning that thing. Praise God. So listen, wait, you see, that's why you must understand him. So when you go before him and say, Lord, what, what do you think about this discussion we just had? Knowing that he was there. So you don't go, Lord, I want to talk to you. Say, Lord, you know I met Susan so person today. And he said this and said that. He heard. Praise God. He heard. Go straight to the point. Lord, they, they, you know they are trying to get me to decide on this. But you know I can't make that decision until I know what you think. You had the discussion. You were there and you were there. I knew you were there. So Lord, can you guide me? What do you think? Then you wait for him to speak to you. And most times, the very moment he will speak to you. Other times, he'll tell you, wait. Just wait. Okay. Now, I say, but, but, but what if he doesn't speak to you? Why won't he speak to you? The problem is not about him speaking. The problem is about you hearing him. Now, when you don't hear him, listen. When you don't hear him expressly, be patient and observe You'll be amazed that somebody came to you in the morning to discuss business with you and everything looks so real where that business is concerned. And now you want to take a decision. And I say, no, well, let me pray about it. And then you prayed about it. 
and you're watching. You've not really heard God say anything. By evening, you get a phone call and someone is talking to you. Ah, there was one guy, I almost did business. I almost ran into fraud stars. He said, really? Mm, wow. hmm. One guy came to me oh, and man, the business was so like, okay. But man, do you know I realized the guy was fraudster? How did he realize it? I, I checked this out and I checked this out. Like, oh, what's the guy's name? Really? And it's the same person that came to discuss with you. Really? <laughs> Thank you. He said, what's the matter? No, don't worry. <laughs> don't worry. See, that's the Holy Spirit that has helped you. He guided you into the truth of that situation. So it is always important you run things through him. Our time is up. Praise God. Listen, you will not be deceived in this life. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you.